This is part two of If You Should Choose This Mission that's in the Green Knight Terraforming Company world. I wrote this a few years ago. And uh, at this point I'm going to say <clears throat> if my voice starts to get a little it growly or whatever, I apologize. All right, starting with part two. It was late afternoon and the sun started to dip as Donald and I showed up at the Area 51's front gate. We left the van some yards down the road. We wanted it to be close enough for an escape plan, but far enough away that if the roaches were stronger and meaner than us, <coughs> we could make a clean escape. The cat just stuck into the sky and a strong breeze swept past us to the open gate. When I was a boy, my parents were UFO nuts. Then the gate was always closed. In fact, you couldn't get closer than five miles to this place without being turned away by security guards with big guns. That's when I decided that I liked uniforms. The uniforms made the security guards look badass and ready for anything. I wanted to be just like them. This afternoon, when we walked up to the open gate, my stomach clenched. This was wrong. There, were n there was no one manning the gates. When we walked up the dusty road, we saw empty uniforms with guns on the ground and bullets scattered near our feet. Before any of the guards could put up a fight, they had been overwhelmed. It would be bad, very bad. When Miss Frigg had given, up a given us this mission, I had been sure it had, it had only been one cockroach and that been able to escape their doom from the last dying world they had eaten. It looked like there may have been more just by the signs of missing guards and broken weapons. There was a musty odor coming from the back, past the gate. I pulled my gun and Donald followed me. We may be the diversion but we didn't want to be killed in the process. A metallic smell convinced me that the roach had already killed every guard in this compound maybe just a few days ago. Then we heard a boom, boom, boom coming from our right. I welcomed the adrenaline as it poured through my body. A leg swiped at me when I looked up and then up and then up and I knew we had made a mistake. The roach wasn't the size of a large man. No, it was double or triple the size of one of us. I was in a fight for my life as I jumped back to get out of the range of the roach. Although we called this alien race roaches, there were some difference from the cockroaches I had seen as a child. They had six legs, two antennas, an oval body with two wings, and were reddish brown in color. This roach had six appendages with two of them as legs. His antenna sniffed the air around us. It used its other four appendages to hit us. Its biggest weapon was a smell. I wanted to bend over and get rid of the last food that was in my stomach. The armor that the rabbit had sprayed on us must have been bad for the roach too. It didn't want to touch us, which meant that we had a fighting chance. Of course, I didn't want to touch it either. Then there was another rumble. Hell, there was another one of those creatures. The roach in front of us backed up and the mama of all roaches skittered toward us on six legs, then stood up on two. It was twice as big as the first roach and I knew she was hungry. She's hungry and wants green soup, I told Donald. He kept his eyes on the roaches. A she? Yes, and she's getting ready to lay eggs. I hate it. If you remember, I'm not telepathic, but I could sure hear this roach. Her antennas were dancing over my head. I could almost hear words. Miss Frigg didn't know much about the roaches except that they were the scourge of the cosmo. The roaches would take over a planet and eat everything edible. When they were found, we would come in and exterminate them, except somehow one or two of them would survive and it would start all over again with another world. No one had been able to capture one or even learn anything about them except that they looked like ravenous insects. Unfortunately, I was finding out differently. It was communicating. Donald had gotten behind her and was hitting her with a piece of pipe that he had pulled off the fence. He was strong enough that he could rip up the entire place he could rip the entire place apart with his bare hands. I heard her screaming, Get out of here! I'll take care of the brutes. You go and save the children. She whipped her antennas in my dis 
direction and I leaped sideways. I was shooting at the laser, laser gun at her, but her carapace acted like armor. She screamed when I burned one of her legs. What the hell, I yelled. Can you talk? I st heard strange noises coming out of her mouth, but they were high-pitched, and I couldn't make out the words. Of course I was using basic. She waved the antennas over my head, and I heard her say, Of course I can talk, and she tried to skewer me. I took a deep breath and yelled, Stop! It came out like an air horn, and Donald froze. The she-roach froze. Are you sentient? I think at the moment she wanted to brain me with a rock. Of course I am sentient. Then using the communication link to the rabbits, I called, Stop Plan A! Stop Plan A! The good news was that this was the last roach pair in the cosmos. The bad news was this was a sentient race and the International Council had jurisdiction, which meant the termination order was illegal. I called Miss Frigg on a communication link. To my surprise, she was in the spaceship circling the Earth. She would be there in an hour. I knew the UFO community would be having fun tonight. They may even get a few shots of a real spaceship. There was a line between the roach pair and us that I called the ceasefire line. If roaches could glare, I was sure the sea ro she roach was giving me an interspecies glare. Hmm. Hmm. Excuse me. Donald and I sat on the ground <clears throat> as I wondered how this had gone so wrong. We couldn't let the roaches live on Earth. It had a lot of life. All of it was quarantined, of course, which Miss Frigg might have considered acceptable. I didn't. I had family here. Hell, I was human. I was ready to growl. A silver disc came out of the sky and settled down behind us. The sun was setting and the disc changed colors from yellow, pink, and orange. It opened and Miss Frigg strolled down the ramp. She took a quick glance at us and then faced the roaches who went from flat to standing in seconds. She began to squeal at them. I shouldn't have been surprised. Miss Frigg was full of secrets. Her hair was up in a bun and her skirt swirled around her. The roach squealed back. Then Miss Frigg pointed to the silver disc. I could hear an audible sigh come from the she-roach. She scuttled to the ship with a smaller roach behind her. It looked like a sack, a sack was strapped to her back. I would have bet eggs. The disc began to hum and soon it was airborne. Seconds later we saw a streak in the sky. They were gone. Miss Frigg waited for us to join her. What the hell, I said. You really scared Shiva. Miss Frigg gave me a long look. Is that bug spray you are wearing? I sniffled. Yep. Donald was still sitting. Fighting in such heat must have worn him out. I still had enough energy to be feisty. So what did you say? She smiled. We st decided to give them their own planet with help to keep it stocked. They are sentient. Besides, they are damn scared of that bug spray. It's the only thing that can exterminate them. Yeah, that wasn't a nice smile on her lips. The supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. Sun Tzu, I whispered. And that's the end. <laughs>